welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia and today we're going to be learning a difficult spin. We're going to be doing the tuck spin. It's also known as a mushroom by some of my students. So you might have heard it either way, the tuck or the mushroom. It is a sit spin variation. All right, so if you are working on your sit spin, this is great. Uh, if you're great at your sit spin, this is a good variation. But if you're trying to build up muscle from the sit spin, this is a great way to work on a spin that builds up muscle in that left spinning leg or right if you're a clockwise spinner, either way. Okay, so today we're gonna be working on our tuck spin. So the first thing we're gonna actually do is practice this position gliding so you can get that into your muscles. You can develop it as muscle memory. It's really hard to just start with a spin. So we're gonna start gliding. Okay, so since I am a counterclockwise rotator, I am gonna be spinning on my left leg, so I'm gonna be gliding on my left leg. If you are a clockwise rotating spinner, you're gonna be doing this on your right. So most left-handed skaters are clockwise rotators. It's not every single one, but that's kind of standard, so you can decide which one feels better to you. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing this on my left since I am a clock counterclockwise rotator. So I'm gonna take a couple steps, get some speed. I'm gonna glide on my left, and I'm gonna put the laces of my boot right against the back of my knee. So we're gonna start there. It might not stay there perfectly, but that's where we're starting. Okay, it's kind of a weird four. I'm gonna start with just my hands in a V, just for balance. I'm gonna practice pressing down. Now you wanna press down until your hip is the same level as your knee. All right, so foot attaching to the back of my knee, hands out in a V for balance, and I'm just gonna squat down until my hip is the same level as my knee. You can see my foot has slid a bit. So it started behind my knee and it slid a little bit down so it's behind my ankle. That's just fine because your knee's bending. You don't want your foot actually getting caught in there. So, but if you want, if you have it start behind your knee and then you can compress and let it kind of slide down so you end up in this little tucked position, okay? So you're foot is behind your leg, your hip is as low as your knee, and for now your hands are just out in a low V. So we're gonna practice that position gliding first. So you can practice that gliding two ways. You're gonna start by just trying to keep those hands out and balance, okay? And once you've got that down, you're gonna take your spinning leg hand, so for me that's my left leg, okay? Left leg, left hand. I'm gonna take my hand and face my palm towards my body, okay? So I'm not facing away. My palm is facing towards my body. As I scrunch down, I'm then gonna grab the back of the heel, okay? This allows me to get contact with my foot without touching my blade, and then my other hand is just going to pull in to my chest, okay? That is one variation. Let me put it up, do right up against the wall here. Here we go. Okay, that is one variation. There's lots of different arm and leg positions, but this one is a great one that you guys can practice and it cr creates a little ball or a little mushroom. This is why skaters like to call this a mushroom. Okay, so let's talk about how to get into this spin. So this is gonna wind up the way you will do with a forward spin. I always do wind ups from a crossover. I know there's people who do it from an inside three turn and you can do it that way, but I feel like winding up from a crossover is gonna give you a more consistent, steady spin while you're working on it. So we're gonna wind up right over left. We're gonna step forward with that left hand in front, just like we do with any other spin. But now instead of pulling forwards like we would with a one foot spin, we're going to tuck behind. So it um, doesn't have that reach that a forward sit would have uh, or a one foot spin would have. You're gonna step and then your foot's going to close, okay? So uh, we're gonna try this first with our hands staying in a V, all right? So I don't want you closing your hands like a normal sit. I want you to have a V. You can close your hands. There's so many variations to what you can do position-wise, so it's not like it, you're not allowed to, but just um, since this spin often has like hands behind or hands touching the ice or that kind of thing, we don't wanna get used to that momentum that we get with our hands pulled forward. When you pull your hands, you develop momentum and I don't want you relying on that to make this spin good, okay? So we're just gonna leave our hands in a V. So we wind up, 
left hand out, hands in a V, and then we're going to tuck that foot behind. So we're going back to that position that we started with where our laces were behind our knee. And you can start with just spinning in that position. So your laces are behind your knee. Okay, it's a little odd feeling. Okay, you wanna find your balance, find your center so you don't travel. Okay, so that's gonna be your position number one. Spinning, hands in a V, uh, right laces behind your left knee. We're gonna wind up, step, right laces behind your left knee. Once you practice it that way, we're gonna take it a step further and bend that left knee. So we wind up, put those hands in a V, tuck our laces. Now we're going to drop our hips and knee. So you don't want to pitch forward where you're just bending in the hips. That's gonna put you on your toe picks, you're gonna fall forwards. So you want to drop your hips down so that they match your knees, okay? So your knees are definitely bending. You wanna be bending the ankle, the knee, and the hips. So we have those hips dropping down while the ankles and the knees bend. That is true for any sit variation. So working on it in your tuck is really gonna help you apply that technique to your sit spin as well, okay? So we wind up, make our V, put our laces behind our knee, drop that bum down, Woo. All right, so as you drop your bum down, you're gonna, your skate is gonna slide down slightly so it ends up behind your ankle instead of behind your knee. We talked about that with the glide. Same thing's gonna happen with your spin. Okay, so once you practice that and you're getting it centered, you're not falling over, you're keeping your hips really even, you're keeping your shoulders really even, you're not doing just the hips, you're dropping all three. Okay, so we want everything very square, okay? Square hips, square shoulders, hips and knees dropped, okay? We wanna be working on all those things when we're in that basic V arm position. Then we can play around with arms, okay? Then you can go around and grab that foot. You can pull your hand in. You can trace your fingers on the ice. You can put your hands behind your back. But we're gonna start out with making it very, very square through our body. Step. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that heel. And this is why, you guys, this is why you put your hair in a hair tie. Ooh. So I have this thing with my inner ears where if I can't see, I have a really hard time balancing. So as soon as, like in that spin, my hair goes over my eyes, I lose um, kind of perception about where I am in the world. And it's hard to figure out what's up and what's down. And so for me, being able to see when I'm especially spinning is um, just a safety thing. And so I'm always on my students about making sure they have their hair up. And I like to have it down for videos because I think it's pretty. But we're gonna get practical here and be safe. Now I'm really excited because we have Coach Sarah coming over here. She actually has a really, really good tuck spin. I was working on filming this and I saw her out here practicing an amazing tuck spin and I was like, can you please come do one on camera for me? So I'm very, very excited to have her demonstrating. Now you do your arms with a little bit of flair. Sometimes. Sometimes? Depends. All right. I usually like grabbing my blade yes. with my left. I, I like grabbing your, my blade with my left as well. I was having them do it with either a V or touching and grabbing. Do you do anything with your right hand? So then my right hand usually points down to my left toe. Okay, so you've got grabbing with the foot with the left and the right is touching the toe. Love it. Any other tips for our viewers? Uh, bring your butt up first when trying to exit. Butt comes up, then chest follows. Oh, on the way up. Okay, I like that. Well, let's see it. Oh 
oh my gosh, we got we got a double whammy here. We got to sit into a tuck, which is even fancier. I get more speed because I kicked my foot all the way around forward. Okay, so earlier I was saying that other spins, you pull your hands and legs forward and that gives you momentum, whereas the tuck, we don't have that. So what you're doing is doing as a combination, so you get the momentum and that speed from the classic sit and then transferring over into the tuck. Exactly. I like it. Thank you so much for demonstrating. Thank you. All right, skaters, I hope you enjoyed that tuck spin tutorial. It is a challenging one, but definitely worth it if you're working on spins in that sit spin range, either the classic sit spin or any of the variations. You want to add this tuck spin to your repertoire of sit spin variations. And you can do it solo or, as you saw Sarah do, as a combo spin. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please do give us that thumbs up. And as always, I'm looking forward to reading all your comments in that section down below. If you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.